Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habitu fillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith of Sahih Muslim, and this shows us the importance of, of striving to have good deeds. And it also shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not concerned with how handsome, how strong you are, how beautiful you are, how nice you look with makeup on, how disobedient you are to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, but instead He's concerned about tabarak wa ta'ala and He looks and is going to judge you based on your heart and your righteous deeds. And this is a time we're drawing near to a time when it's a time of righteous deeds and we'll be talking about that. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. But in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Inna allaha la yandhru lal adsadakum wa la ila surakum wa lakin yandhru lal qulubakum wa amalakum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Verily Allah does not look to your bodies nor to your beauty, or you know, your shapes and your bodies and your looks. So whether you are handsome or ugly, whether you're beautiful or less displeasing to some people's eyes, then this is not anything important to Allah. Maybe the people like to make judgments about this, but Allah, it's not important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the law, la yandhru la adsadukum, wa la ila surakum. Allah doesn't look to your your bodies in your 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 your, your physical form. But rather he looks to your hearts and your deeds, showing us that we've got to try to beautify our deeds. We've got to try to do what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the dunya has been beautified for us, negative and evil has been beautified for us. And continues to be even on a higher level, especially with the internet and with the and, and the, the various forms of communication, social media, and before that would have been television and radio, but now it's on a whole nother level. So the negative has been beautified for us. Evil has been beautified for us. But good deeds have been made to look ugly and boring, displeasing to the youth, displeasing to the elders, displeasing to us all. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to that. And He looks to see if you're sincere in your heart. And I cannot emphasize enough to you, Habitafillah. Because we can't judge your sincerity. At least be sincere. You may not have a lot of knowledge. You may not even have a lot of good deeds. But do your best to be sincere to Allah. No one can take that from you. Be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In your righteous deeds, if it's if it's making da'wah, people are always going to say, oh, so-and-so, I, I can't believe how many people make judgments, you know, and say, oh, so-and-so, he loves the chair. How many times do we see this, especially about du'at in the West? I know so many people, they say, oh, he loves the chair. People, you know, people have claimed that about me. Well, well I don't love the chair. If I wanted the chair, you, you would see action striving to get the chair. You don't see that. Yes, I put out information. And I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to do a thousand, a million times because it's free. I can reach millions of people. You know, if Allah blessed me with that ability, I can reach people around the world free. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hada ni'ma min ni'amillah. And so, you know, no one can judge your sincerity. So I'm emphasizing for myself as a reminder and my brothers and sisters as a reminder, be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayer, in your sacrifice, in your, your life, in your uh, your dua, in your dawah, in everything that you're trying to do, be sincere. You know, every there's always people in the corner there to tear you down. I saw where a brother Pace posted on social media, him in his community, I think it was in uh, uh, Baltimore. They put out a dawah table, they were doing some khair, calling the name. Someone posted on there something like, I can't remember what the negative was, just trying to destroy. Here are these young sh shabab, warriors, trying to be warriors of the sunnah. You know, we're trying to call the people to, to Islam, bring them from darkness to light. And all this person could say was some negative garbage. You know, oh, you know, you know, oh, this, this is haram. Is that, it's permissible. It's a Taghut system or, oh, the police were protecting it. Oh, it's a Taghut system. 
What are you talking about? Subhanahu, subhanallah. So it shows us how there's always going to be negative. So be sincere. In Allah, la yandru al qulub, la yandru al atsadikum. Well, that can yandru al qulubukum wa amalakum. You know, paraphrasing the hadith. He's look. He's not looking to all that other stuff, but he's looking to your deeds and your sincerity. And what is deeds and sincerity? Subhanallah. That goes back to what we said earlier. What are the two conditions for our deeds in, to be accepted? Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and that you're following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the manner that you're doing those deeds. Those deeds have to have muafaqa bi sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahab al listen to this, listen to how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, they looked at doing neg- how they saw negative deeds because we, and I'm talking about me first and then you, we see uh, our haram that we do is so light. It's so easy for us. You know, well, you have to take that haram job. Well, you, you know, it's, it's a different time. We need to take some of that riba. Oh, you know, it's a different time. We need to, you know, you know mix and we need to do this. We need to, you know, get, uh, uh, you know, we need to kind of date first before we get married. We need to, you know, we're looking at every way to compromise our deen and compromise things that are muharram in their asl. We're looking at every way to, to, to do it. May Allah forgive us and guide us, I mean, and help us and yeah, forgive us, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So listen to this how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Menjma'in were with these, these things. Uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Verily, Allah the Exalted becomes angry, and his anger is provoked when a person does what Allah has declared unlawful. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. So Allah, his ang- Allah has anger. غَيْرَ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا ضَالِينَ so we can earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we follow the Yahud and Nasara, you know, and follow them and follow them in, in disobedience to Allah and, and disobeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, the Quran, and disobeying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then yeah, we can earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, you indulge, and he was talking to the people in his time, because he wasn't talking to us, but this is for us, of course. But he was talking during his time, can you imagine that? Radiallahu ta'ala He said, and that shows how, you know, how much more they took sin seriously during the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and through much of Islamic history, compared to the way it became in the later generations, and up until uh, our time. He said, you indulge in a bad actions which are more insignificant to you than a hair. While we considered them at the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be great destroying sins, meaning the uh, kabair, the major sins. So things that we think is just, you know, well, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, yeah, I got this problem. I hit, hit this and I hit that. And I drink a little bit of this and I smoke a little of that and I do a little bit of this and I touch a little of that. We think that's insignificant. May Allah forgive us and you. But the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu majma'in, thought of those things as the kabair, because they had taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They feared Allah. They feared His punishment. And they wanted to do what pleased Him and what would get them to paradise. Their goal was paradise. Our goal is the dunya, and then hopefully we get to paradise. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahl-e-Ikhlas wa Ahl-e-Mutabi' wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.